Hey guys, what's going on? Vega here from Serpent X Special Forces, and today we're just going to be talking about memory. This memory is going to be going into my main system with the Ryzen 9 5900X and the MSI uh, 6800. Does memory really help out? Well, in Ryzen's case, from my understanding, uh, the higher the memory speeds, the better. So we got some crucial ballistics RGB memory. Uh, this speed is 4400. I didn't get the 5100 one because one, this memory itself is not on the QVL list, so it may not even be compatible. However, from my understanding, even if it wasn't, uh, we should still be good. That's why I want to open this today because I actually just got this, and if it doesn't work, I need to be able to send it back or at least util utilize it on another system. This is a total of 32 gigs, so 64 is very expensive. 32 would do just fine for what I plan on doing with it. So let me get this installed into the system and let's see the performance difference between the G-Skill Trident Z RGB 3200 MHz versus the Crucial Ballistics uh, Max is what this particular model is called, 4400 MHz. So viewers of the channel and subscribers are pretty familiar with this particular system. I'll just go through it real quick. It is the ASRock uh, X570 Tachi Razor. Uh, realistically, I wouldn't have picked this motherboard. It's not my number one pick. Uh, but it came as a bundle deal with the CPU off the Newegg Shuffle. Uh, as I said, 5900X, MSI Trio, uh, RX6800, in a Corsair Obsidian 500D. We also have the 360mm RAD, or all-in-one. Some more Corsair fans, Corsair everything. And I probably said that a hundred times wrong, but I don't care. I'm going to keep going. This case isn't really the best for airflow, and you can see the dust inside the filter here. This panel blocks all the air, so sometimes, you know, if I'm doing some serious overclocking or anything like that, or, or some benchmarks, I might take this filter off, but I do need to clean this guy out. Anyways, the main show right here, uh, we need to swap these guys out for the Crucial Ballistics. And I really like this kit, like, packaging. It's, like, really, really pretty. I like it. So we're gonna get these guys out of this box. And there she is, looking all nice. We're gonna go ahead and slap these in and see how, uh, how the results. I got, I got some benchmarks where I tested um, a, a couple of applications with this memory. And then we're gonna swap these in and see how the performance increase, you know, just from jumping from 3600 to 4400 megahertz. So let's do that. All right, there they are. All four dims populated. It's been a while since I was able to do this. I do have four of the old school G skill, but my son is using two on his Ryzen system. Uh, wow, now that I think about it, my entire house is Ryzen now. Interesting. But I do have an Intel system coming up, which you'll see in a future video. This memory has served me well, and it will be in that new Intel build in the future. Stay tuned for that. But let's go ahead and get this system booted back up after I clean it, of course and uh, see how the memory speeds are. We'll switch over to the main computer. All right, so we're booted up and we're back on the main system, but I wanna go over a couple key things. Crucial memory has been around for quite a while, so has G-Skill, and I, I basically love both brands, but I wanted to upgrade my overall capacity as well as my speed. Crucial has my attention. Um, even though G-Skill has also broken records, Crucial has, has my attention because of the records they set. Now, of course, these aren't the RGB uh, family of memory sticks, but still I can get 4,400 megahertz or thereabouts and have my cake and eat it too with the RGB. But we know AMD loves memory and memory speed. Uh, what I would recommend though, because there's going to be some, some catches or cons that I bumped into with this memory kit, is you as a user before you upgrade your memory for your motherboard make sure it's on the qvl list so most motherboards uh, will have a support page in which you can check out the memory qvl and uh, for 5900x or the 5000 series you want vermeer uh, then matisse is the 3000 series and then Raynar is the apu uh, if you look at this list my memory or the kit is not actually on here and here's what I was uh, going to talk about is I think my memory kit is Micron B die, but I'm not entirely sure. So don't quote me on that. But they got Micron E, B, D. Uh, so whether or not 
the various versions provide a, a performance uplift, uplift, I can't 100% tell you yes or no. Uh, but I have seen, for example, on GPUs, uh, Samsung B die outperform Micron on one series, and then Micron outperform Samsung on another series. So that's neither here or there. Uh, the main thing is when I boot it into my system for the first time, and let me go back up here. When I boot it into my system for the first time, if you look right below me, you can see right now I'm only running at 2,000 megahertz, which is pretty much double. So it's 4,000 megahertz rather than the 4,400 uh, that this kit is rated for. And there's a reason for that. So my motherboard would not load or would not boot uh, when we set the XMP profile of 4400 megahertz. However, I was able to do so with 4266. The cool thing about uh, this memory is say for example sometime in the future I decide to upgrade or uh, maybe there's a BIOS update for this particular motherboard I might be able to support that full speed of 4400 megahertz. Then again, it's not too much of a hit going down to 4266 which is where I can run at right now. I'm not running at that speed but I'll show you some performance numbers uh, with the max speed that I was able to hit with this motherboard in just a moment. The big thing is making sure that your memory is on the, the supported list for the motherboard you have. Um, if it's not, you may have to run it at a lower speed. Also, I may have to run it at a lower speed because of the amount of memory I have in there. Normally, if you're really overclocking your memory, you want to run only two sticks, not all four DIMMs populated, or if you have you know, eight, not all eight populated. Instead, you want to run four. Um, I can utilize the DRAM uh, calculator for Ryzen to kind of tweak and get that extra performance out of this uh, memory, but I'm not really concerned about that. I'll tweak that on another video or maybe another day. But you can see right now my memory utilization is fluctuating. It's getting almost up to 18 gigabytes. If not, it is 18 plus. So 16 gigs wasn't going to cut it for the workload that I'm doing. So the extra capacity is greatly beneficial. Also, you can see the memory timings are a little bit tighter when I run at lower uh, megahertz. But uh, again, with the DRAM calculator, I can get some extra performance. Now, cool thing I like that the G Skills. Uh, memory kit did not have is I actually have a D, uh, dim temperature sensor and I can see all four dims That's pretty nice. Now if I switch over let me switch over here for you guys I want to show you something upgrading your the because we know AMD likes uh, The frequency or high, you know higher memory frequencies That gives you that extra edge of performance it really depends on the application so you can't say yeah it's gonna give me this much it really depends on the application for example this is Cinebench 11.5 we got 43.25 on G skill and then we only went up a you know 25 points to 43.55 at 22 or excuse me 4266 and again this number right here where you see 2133 is double uh, moving on to a really, really old application, Cinebench uh, 2003, we got 5808, but then when we ran our crucial memory, we jumped up quite a bit to 7081. So we saw a decent jump in performance there, but not so much in 11.5. And then when we did the R20, you know, we hit 7989, but then with the crucial memory, uh, we only got a high of 8087 so it's still a performance gain but not much of a performance gain compared to the G skill memory that I had and then time spy you know the biggest thing that we want to take note of here is the overall score and then the CPU score is the most important thing when we upgrade our memory uh, speeds as a whole so there you go so 14 445 11 656 but on crucial, we got a, a couple hundred, a few hundred um, on the overall score, but the CPU score jumped up quite a bit. Uh, and again, this is not even overclocking the CPU. So now I have the capability of, of tweaking the infinity, uh, infinity fabric and CPU core clocks, voltages, and, and get that extra performance with this memory kit to help out with benchmarks, but primarily to help out with the workload that I'm utilizing right now uh, to you know with all this memory capacity that I have so that's one of the biggest things that I went with yeah I could have taken my memory my, my other two sticks uh, from G skill are actually 
in my sun system. I could have taken those and utilized that, but uh, I just wanted to upgrade to faster memory. I think 3200 is the, the main staple of the gaming community as far as like that sweet spot for, for FPS and, and good mid-range area. Uh, but now that we're extending the speeds of DDR4, it's starting to climb up. You know, maybe uh, 38 or 3600 would be that sweet spot instead of 3200. Uh, but we're seeing memory all the way up to, you know, 50, 5100 megahertz, which is absolutely nuts. So it's good to see technology grow. It's unfortunate that it's hard to get uh, hardware at all. Uh, if you're interested in buying the, the kit featured in this video, I'll have it linked down in the description below. This kit is 212, but it's the 400, uh, four, yeah, 4,000 4, megahertz kit. Uh, this one's more expensive. It is 4,400, but it's two by 16 sticks. Um, and I again have two by eight, uh, a total of 32. But that's pretty much it, guys. I hope uh, you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you didn't, please leave me some feedback. Hit me up in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel for more. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for stopping by. You take care, all right?